this video, we'll be discussing how to create Z-Sphere armatures in ZBrush Core. Z-Sphere armatures can be used to quickly and very easily create larger shapes and forms without the need to do any actual sculpting. We can quickly block out any character, creature, or almost anything you can imagine. When completed, we can take our Z-Sphere armature and convert it into a sculptable mesh which can then be sculpted and modeled on with our brushes. This feature is perfect for those who are new to sculpting and is the quickest way for you to get to the basic desired shape for what you have in mind to create to make it easier for you to begin the sculpting process. So let's take a look at how this works. The first thing we need to do is launch a ZSphere project. To find our default projects in ZBrush Core, click on the Lightbox button here at the top. This is our Lightbox Project tab where we can click and drag to navigate through the selected projects. This double shaded red sphere here is our ZSphere project. Double click it to load the project. With the ZSphere loaded, we can now begin to add and modify this to create more interesting shapes. The primary tools for modifying ZSphere's can be found here at the top which are Draw, Move, Scale, and Rotate. We can click on each of these buttons to toggle them on and off. To create additional Z-spheres, we will need to be sure that Draw Mode is enabled. And as you can see, we have our two cursor points visible on both sides of the mesh. To get started, think of this as the beginning of a character you're about to create. Now, to begin adding Z-spheres, hover your cursor over the mesh and click and drag your cursor outwards until you've reached a desired scale. Now let go of your cursor and we have two added Z-spheres to the armature. When we bring our cursor to the center of the Z-sphere, you can see the dots will align, creating a single green circle. This is signifying that we are aligned to the symmetry line. By clicking and dragging to add a Z-sphere at the symmetry line, this will add a single Z-sphere instead of two Z-spheres. To delete a Z-sphere, hold Alt or the Option key and click on the Z-sphere to delete it. If you attempt to delete the original or root Z-sphere, you will see this cannot be done. The root Z-sphere is a placeholder for us to build off of and cannot be deleted. We can only delete or remove additional Z-spheres that have since been added to the root Z-sphere. Now let's draw two more Z-spheres, but this time, let's be sure to click and hold as we drag outwards. And if we continue to hold our left mouse button and drag inwards, you can see we can scale our Z-sphere by dragging back and forth. This will be very beneficial for us as we continue to draw more Z-spheres. And we can create a chain of Z-spheres and continue to draw as many additional Z-spheres as needed. Now to create more interesting shapes as we've drawn in a few Z-spheres, let's start to move these around by first switching to the Move option. With Move selected, click directly onto a Z-sphere and start to drag around the canvas. We can also move the root Z-sphere to adjust the positioning further. As we begin to move Z-spheres around, at any point, we can add more Z-spheres between the connections by simply switching back to draw mode and clicking once between these Z-spheres. This will add a sphere between them, allowing for more options to adjust and create interesting shapes. Now let's switch back to the Move option and continue to move these around. The direction we are able to move the Z-spheres is dependent on the camera. By viewing from the front, this is our current range of motion. By rotating around the mesh, this will give us different vantage points to continue moving these Z-spheres around the canvas. While in the Move option, it's important to know that our draw size will control how many Z-spheres we move at once. If I adjust the draw size slider here at the top to be much larger, and if I now attempt to move a Z-sphere, you can see that because my brush radius is covering a larger area, this will move all of the Z-spheres within my brush radius. 
At some point down the road, this may be a nice effect that you would like to have, but in most cases at the beginning stages, it's best to keep our draw size set to 1 to make it easier to affect each individual z-sphere as we continue to edit. Another important part to z-spheres is the parent-child relationship. Each time we add a z-sphere, we are creating a larger chain of spheres, and between each z-sphere is a link that is added to represent a connection. The parent z-sphere is the one that sits at the top of the chain. The child or children of this chain are all of the z-spheres connected to that parent. If I click on any z-sphere in the chain, you can see we get these connector links and circles. These lines and circles represent a connection from the parent to the child, which we can use to manipulate the entire chain of z-spheres. To select a connector line, as we hover over these, you will see they become highlighted in green. With the Move option, I can click on the connector links, and this will move all child z-spheres from this point. If I draw towards the end of the chain, the z-spheres will begin to straighten out naturally. If I drag towards the top of the chain, or the parent, they will begin to flex naturally. Think of these connector links as bones, and the circles as joints. Each of these joints represents a point of articulation, or a pivot point, for the mesh to be manipulated from. And always remember that the range of motion of the z-spheres is dependent on the view of the camera, so be sure to rotate around the mesh at different angles to move in different directions. Each of our three transform options, move, scale, and rotate, can use these connector lines in different ways to help you easily manipulate a chain of z-spheres. That covers the move mode, so let's take a break and in the next video we'll talk about using the scale mode. So I'll see you in the next video.